get going. Then I'm reaching for another case. Okay, uh, today's presentation is on the uh, proposed budget for uh, 2014. And give you a quick summary of the presentation. We'll uh, talk about our guiding principles. Then we'll get into each individual fund, the wastewater system funds, the golf funds, the uh, operations fund, capital and amenity reserve funds. Then we'll talk about the amenity master plan, give you an update on that, and actually uh, show you a five-year plan towards the end. Uh, then we'll bring that all together to a consolidated cash flow. Then we'll talk about our debt service and what our debt will look like uh, over the course of the next uh, five years. And then uh, again, the five-year amenity and financial plan. And then at the end, we'll have a question and answer section. So y'all can ask any questions about what you've seen today or maybe things that you haven't seen today. Our guiding principles. Uh, first of all, we want to make sure that we continue to improve our infrastructure. For example, our road system. We want to make sure that we continue to uh, pave the roads that are currently paved and also do the chip and seal to those roads that need the chip and seal. Likewise, we want to continue our deferred maintenance program that we started a couple years ago, and that was as a result of the Upland Design Report, which was really what I call an existing condition study that said, here are your existing conditions, here's what you need to do to bring those up to date in terms of today's standards and what have you. Most of that is uh, repair and maintenance type items, but there are a lot of capital items included in, in that, and we'll have a schedule that shows you that. <coughs> We want to update, replace some of the older amenities. For example, Druid Hills Pool Cabana, we want to replace that. Likewise, Dorchester Clubhouse, another uh, clubhouse that we'd like to replace. Uh, additionally, in terms of updating, you'll see we talk about Stonehenge Clubhouse in the uh, presentation. That's something we'd like to update. And then add a new amenity, being a Stonehenge Pavilion. Those uh, last two bullet points were all part of the amenity master plan that we rolled out last year. First thing we want to talk about is new home starts. Uh, this really directly has an impact on our sewer funds, but it also gives you kind of a sense of where we're going uh, as a community as a whole. You can see back in uh, 2006, we had 226 new home starts. So that was the high point. But then going down to 2011, we went down to 51 home starts. So that was the low point. That's really when the bottom of the market hit. And so now you can see in 2012, we had 61 home starts. 2013, we're projecting 83 home starts. So we're seeing some nice improvement there. And then 2014, we're trying to be conservative, so we're projecting 80 home starts. We think we can hit that number, but we don't want to go too high on that. So that's, that's good news. It appears that the, you know, the economy has turned around, and we're seeing a lot of construction out there. Now, a bit of good news with respect to the sewer service fund. There'll be no service fee increase this year. It'll remain at $33 a month. So for those of you that are on sewer, no increase in your monthly sewer fee. Now this is an overview of the uh, wastewater systems budget. Uh, and what you'll see is it pretty much is self-funding now. There's no reason to take money from our capital fund or anything else to fund this, uh, this budget. You can see in uh, 2013, we're projecting about 835,000 in cash flow from operations. In 2014, we're going up a little over $120,000. Now, a lot of that is really as a result of Good Samaritan. They're actually adding more cottages. They're hoping to start phase two in 2014. So that is directly impacting the sewer system budget and increasing the revenues as a result of that, in addition to those new home starts. So we've got an increase in the property owners paying service fees and things of that nature. So that's, that's why it's a direct impact and good news. We started the year with about $1.2 in cash. We'll have capital expenditures about $767,000 and principal on the note for the uh, wastewater treatment plant about $409,000. So we're projecting ending the year at about 878,000. 
taking that over then to 2014, starting at 878,000. Capital expenditures, only 436,000. The difference between this year and next year is the drip field system that we installed in 2013. So that's why we had a, a lot of capital expenditures in 2013 versus 2014. It's kind of more of your normal recurring capital expenditures. And then principal on the note, 441,000. Each year, as the note goes along, we pay more in principal, less in interest. So we end up at the end of the year with projected cash of about 959,000. And that's good, we wanna see an increase in our ending cash uh, each year because probably five, six years down the road, we're gonna to need to make some major improvements to the uh, sewer system infrastructure. Uh, so we need to start building some cash so that hopefully we don't have to borrow money or we can borrow less money. These are the capital expenditures for the wastewater system. Infiltration, excuse me, inflow and infiltration, what we call INI, $160,000. We've been doing that for the last few years. It's really something that you have to continue forever. You'll always have INI, and hopefully you can get a handle on it to where that number can actually be reduced over time. 45,000 for some equipment and a vehicle. 100,000 for a uh, backhoe. Uh, that's the backhoe that we do a lot of our major trenching and things of that nature. So a piece of equipment that they use quite often. Diesel pumps for lift stations. We actually uh, installed some diesel pumps at one of the lift stations this year. Lift station that anytime we have electrical outages, we have problems, we have overflows and things of that nature. So these diesel pumps kick in when that happens so you don't have any uh, overflows. And we'll do another lift station in 2014, and then one in 2015 as well. So we'll keep monitoring that. And it may be over time we do more lift stations so that we have that backup system uh, to eliminate overflows. 41,000 in uh, building repairs, and I'll have a slide that talks about that a little bit later on in the operations section. And then collection system expansion. So anytime we have new homes, potentially we have to expand our collection system as well. So that's about 25,000. So total capital expenditures, about $436,000 in the sewer fund. Okay, we're gonna talk about the golf fund now. Uh, talk about the rounds comparison, then get into the golf fund budget, then talk about the golf fees, and then the last thing we'll cover is the golf fund capital. Golf rounds, you can see in 2010, we had rounds of 155,000 rounds. Then in 2011, 2012, we hovered right around 150,000 rounds. 2013, we're only projecting 142,000 rounds. That's totally because of the weather. You know, we had a very wet season this year, so we lost a lot of rounds of golf because of that. And so that's why we're down to 142,000 projected for 2013. 2014, we're hopeful that the weather will cooperate. And so we've taken the budget to 150,000 rounds for 2013, similar to what we did in 2000, I'm sorry, in 2014, similar to what we did in 2012. Golf fund budget, you see if you look at your cash flow from operations this year, we're projecting about 444,000. That's down from 2012 because of the weather conditions. Next year, we're projecting 544,000. So about a $100,000 yeah, $100, increase in our golf fund cash flow from operations. And that's really driven by a combination of the rounds as well as a small price increase. The golf fund, we usually keep at zero. So uh, we have our cash flow from operations, we'll always have capital expenditures, but the golf fund is not self-sufficient. We have to actually transfer funds from the capital fund, so therefore we always keep the uh, ending cash for the golf fund at zero. This year, about 1.2 million that we're transferring, I'm sorry, we'll have 1.2 million in capital expenditures. Now that's primarily because of the new irrigation system and the new cart pass at Dorchester. That's what drove that. We have a note on Stonehenge Golf Club that we pay down, 178,000. And we'll actually transfer 940,000 just to get that ending balance to zero for this year. 
Now, as we look to next year, capital expenditures, only 737,000. We're not doing any major projects like an irrigation system or anything like that. So that's why that's going down almost $500,000. Principal on note will increase. And then we'll only have to transfer about $386,000 from the capital fund to the golf fund in order to keep that balance at zero. So that's, uh, that's good news. Now let's look at the golf fees for each 18 hole round. Right now in 2013, the preferred rate is $29. In 2014, we're gonna take that up just a dollar to $30 a round. Most of our residents uh, that are avid golfers have the preferred card, so they typically, that's all they're paying. Uh, in essence, if you play 20 rounds and you have the preferred card, you've broken even. Now, the member guest rates. The member, while we say member, it's really primarily timeshare guest. Uh, we do have some members, residents that live here that just play occasionally, less than 20 rounds a year. They probably won't get a preferred card, so they're gonna pay that rate if they don't. But when we say member, it's primarily our timeshare guests that are paying that $40 rate. And then guest rate, that $52, would be a guest of a member. Taking that up at $1, again, just the member rate, the guest rate we're leaving at 52. We really would like to encourage you all to bring more guests here, and so that's why we've kept that at 52. Our feeling is that if we can get more guests here, we can get more people in interested in coming here more often on vacation or more importantly buying property here and becoming a residence. Now we implemented winter rates last year starting in late 2012 going into 2013 and uh, those are remaining the same no change in those whatsoever $24 for a preferred $30 for a member $35 for a guest so that remains the same. Another thing we implemented in 2013 was the annual pass program. No change from the 2013 rates. If you're an individual, you'll pay $1,800. That's an upfront fee. If you're a couple, you pay $2,700. We really designed this individual to break even at 100 rounds, the couple to break even at 150 rounds. So that's really designed for the very avid golfer, plays a lot of golf. Now, every time they play though, they're going to pay a cart fee, and that cart fee rate is $12. In 2013, it was $11, so it's just going up $1 to $12 a round. Okay, so again, that's strictly for somebody that takes advantage of the annual pass program. Golf capital expenditures. We have uh, the irrigation system controllers at Heatherhurst are really obsolete. We're having a hard time finding parts for them and things of that nature. Uh, so we need to replace those, and that's about $170,000. Every year, we replace one fleet of carts, anywhere from 72 to 75 carts at a particular golf course. So we're kind of on a five-year rotation, and that, uh, that makes a lot of sense for golf carts. Uh, Heatherhurst will get uh, 75 new golf carts, and that's about $167,000. Then course equipment and vehicles, $400,000. That, that equates to about $80,000 for golf course. And uh, you can actually blow about $50,000 of that just on one fairway mower or one rough mower. They're very expensive uh, pieces of equipment because they're specialty uh, use equipment. So it's about $80,000 a course. So that's your total of $737,000. Operations fund. Uh, we'll talk about the monthly increase and then uh, get into the operating budget. Currently, if you're a resident here or uh, an A-tier lot owner, you pay $47.50 a month. We're going to increase that $2.50 a month so in 2014, your assessment will be $50 per month. Now for B-tier lots, and a B-tier lot uh, is a partially developed lot. It either has a road or it has sewer. It doesn't have both. It's one or the other. They pay 85% of the A-tier lot price, and then C-tier lots are totally undeveloped. Those are those grassy roads that you see throughout the community, no sewer, no road, 
uh, they pay 65% of the A-tier lot. So you can see, likewise, they have a small increase as well. Now, 75% of your assessments will go to operations. The other 25% will go into the capital fund. Okay, operations fund budget. In the operations fund budget, we'll actually have cash flow from operations about a uh, deficit of about $192,000 this year, projecting about $166,000 next year. Now, one thing you will notice if you look at revenues, revenues are actually going down. About, you know, uh, only $16,000, but they're going down. You wouldn't expect that with a price increase as well as uh, new homes, you know, coming in and uh, paying fees and everything. What's going on there is two things. Number one, in 2013, we sold about 70 of the B-tier lots that we own. Okay, that brought in revenue, uh, around $100,000. Okay, and that was split between operations and capital. So that's just on the sale of the lots. In addition, we received uh, assessments for the remainder of the year on those lots, as well as amenity uh, reserve fund money, what have you. So that's good news. And in fact, we have uh, another contract now for the remaining 103 lots, B lots, that we own. And we're hoping to close those by the end of uh, November. So, so that's one component that's not repeating in 2014. The other component is our delinquent accounts. We have some uh, severely delinquent accounts uh, these are accounts that are three years or older, okay? What we've been doing currently and in the past is we bill those accounts and then we recognize that we're not going to receive a lot of money on those. So we record the revenue, but then we record this large bad debt expense, recognizing that we're probably not going to receive all that revenue. So all we've done is we've grossed up our revenues, but we've grossed up our expenses as well, okay? Rather than continue to do that, in 2014, what we're going to do is reserve 100% of those three-year and older delinquencies. And when I say that, we will bill them, we'll send them a bill, we'll try and collect that money, okay? But we recognize it's going to be hard to do. So we're not going to record that as revenue. But likewise, we're not going to record the bad debt expense either. So that's why your revenues are actually going down and you notice your expenses are going down as well, okay? So the only thing that we're going to charge the bad debt expense is those accounts that are less than three years old. Those, again, we're going to book them to revenue, and we're going to book a 70% reserve on those accounts, okay? And that will be a charge of bad debt expense. So that's what's going on there, and that's why you see the decrease in, um, in both revenues and expenses. Now, again, the good news, though, is your deficit is going down versus current year. Now, the beginning of uh, 2013, we had about $1.7 million in cash. Capital expenditures through operations, about $1.1 uh, million. Paying down the principal on the note. That's the uh, refinancing of this community and conference center that we did earlier this year. And we'll transfer about a $1 million from the capital fund to end up with about $1.1 million in cash at the end of this year. Now, again, that 1.1 million goes up here, beginning of 2014. We'll have capital expenditures about 1.4 million. I've got a schedule on that later. Pay down the note a little more than this year. And then we'll transfer into the, from the capital fund about 1.7 million to keep our cash balance right at about $1 million at the end of the year. Okay. Capital expenditures. Uh, first item, uh, we need some new servers for our uh, information technology, software, and equipment. Uh, with our growth, we've got some older servers that really aren't keeping up with uh, what we're doing here. So also part of that is uh, we're going to hire a IT consultant that specializes in this industry. He's one of the, uh, the best known in the, in the business, and uh, I've actually used him in the past. And we're going to bring him on board, have him take a look at our whole system, hardware, software, et cetera, over the course of this year, make recommendations. So a lot of this, the big dollars, probably won't happen until towards the end of the year based on uh, you know, his uh, recommendations and what have you. 
Second thing is $40,000 for a, a new chemical system for our indoor pool right here at the uh, conference center. Uh, that's been recommended by the health department. Then St. George Marina, you know, we uh, replaced the floating docks at Dartmoor Marina in uh, 2012, or 2000, I can't remember now, was it 12 or 13, 12, okay. And uh, so we want to do the same thing at St. George. It's the old, uh, at St. George, we have old fixed docks. They're, uh, you know, wooden and what have you. So we want to go to the same floating docks, concrete uh, surface that will last a lot longer. So we're going to do that. Uh, also at Druid Hills in Dorchester, uh, the pump room equipment is old and in need of replacing and updating. So we'll spend about $40,000 on that. We need a new sanitation truck. That's about $150,000 and actually replaces a vehicle that was purchased back in 1995. So it's about 18 years old. Some more capital expenditures coming out of the operations fund. Uh, Two-ton dump truck, that's a truck that would be used in our uh, roads and bridges department, uh, used to uh, spread salt during the winter time, uh, also used for the road work, hauling a lot of the, uh, the gravel for the chip and seal and things of that nature, hauling brush, whatever. It's just an all-purpose uh, hauling truck. Building repairs, about $360,000. That, again, goes back to the Upland Design Report, and I have a slide on that coming up. Uh, public works equipment and vehicles, as well as a public safety vehicle. Uh, for public safety, we're also on a five-year rotation. We bring in a new vehicle every year. Uh, they put a lot of miles on a vehicle, so uh, you can only get you know, three to five years out of that vehicle, and uh, so we'll be spending some money on that. Walking trails, about 49,000. Due to some easement issues this year, we couldn't do any paved walking trails. So a lot of what we were planning on doing this year is going to move into 2014. Then in the F&B department, uh, we need some new kitchen equipment, china glasses. Uh, that's kind of an every year occurrence. And, uh, and then also want to install an outdoor freezer over at Legends Restaurant. So we have the ability to convert the uh, indoor freezer cooler combination into just a cooler. And uh, by doing this, we can probably buy some more frozen foods that kind of help keep our uh, cost lower. We'll still have a number of fresh uh, items, but there's some items that just makes more sense to buy frozen from a cost standpoint. And then recreational equipment, uh, boats, et cetera, that's things like uh, uh, pontoon boats for your uh, marinas. So various items there. So a total of about $1.4 million in uh, capital expenditures there. Deferred maintenance, so this is uh, what I was talking about before. On the operations fund, it showed about uh, $360,000. And uh, so that's this number here. In total, we're looking at about $401,000. Now, 41,000 of that is at the wastewater treatment plant, and the other $360,000 is in operations. So 41 is actually in the uh, wastewater or the sewer system budget. And you can see we've, we've got a number of buildings that need uh, either roof repairs or new roof, and that's about 26,000. Need some interior, exterior painting and siding, different buildings. I think admin building is one of those. Uh, don't have any carpet and tile in the budget for next year. We've pretty much updated everything, so now that will happen uh, in future years. As we do new buildings, obviously, we're going to need carpet and tile for that, and that comes under that new building budget. <clears throat> parking lot paving seal coating, so we have a number of parking lots. St. George Marina, after we get done with the, uh, the new docks, then we want to go ahead and actually uh, seal and restripe that parking lot. We we're actually planning on doing it this year, but then because of the docks, we said let's wait because there's going to be a lot of uh, damage to the uh, parking lot as a result of that. And there's a couple other uh, parking lots there the, um, where we have the farmer's market. We'll redo that parking lot. I think we do actually have a uh, ceiling of the uh, Druid Hills Golf parking lot is in that mix as well. Electrical, about uh, $60,000. Uh, mechanical, that's mainly our uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. And that's about 79000 And you can see 53000 of that came from the upland. We kind of have that 
the upland column is the things that they pointed out to us. The other are things that we've come up with ourselves as we go through the, uh, the building uh, maintenance process. And then we have some new items as well that we've determined. Uh, 9,500 for structural work. Uh, building expansion, that's actually down at the wastewater treatment plan, a uh, kitchen and restrooms added to the building. Uh, that's, that's a safety feature more than anything. Right now, we've, they're using the lab where they test a lot of the, uh, uh, the water, the sewer product, et cetera, also as a kitchen. So it's not the best thing to, to have. They're, they're keeping it as sanitary as they can, but you know, we feel like we really need to have a separation there, so that's why we're doing that. And then we've got some other storage buildings, pool decks that we have to look at, make some repairs or replace and what have you. Uh, and so that's about $130,000 for all that. So again, $400,000. And then also in facilities maintenance, operating and maintenance budget, we'll, we'll have another $56,000. Those are those smaller projects that are less than $4,000 per project that we just run through operations. So again, this is really a result of the Upland Design Report uh, and taking care of this deferred maintenance. Uh, we'll probably still have some more in 2015, but this is gonna get the bulk of what was on the Uplands Report. So we started at really 2012, 2013 and 14 were the big years, maybe a little more in 2015. Okay, now we're going to talk about the capital and amenity reserve funds budget. So again, this is where 25% of your assessments go into this budget, as well as uh, whenever there's a property transfer, we get money on that transfer that goes into the amenity reserve fund. And so again, revenues, you can see, again, the revenues are dropping. And that again goes back to that bad debt situation that I discussed. Uh, but our cash flow from operations, 2013 projecting about 2.2 million, about the same in 2014. So that's, that's kind of what you want to see. Beginning funds, we had about 841,000 in there. We're going to transfer about 1.96 million over to golf and operations fund. Uh, we've got budgeted or about 490,000 for the uh, master amenity plan projects. And I'll have a slide on that a little bit later. And so we think we'll end up with about 578,000. Actually, it'll probably end up being more because uh, this includes uh, some dollars for Druid Hills Pool that we don't think is gonna happen this year. It's probably gonna happen in January of next year. So take those projected funds, 578,000 beginning. Uh, in 2014, we're projecting uh, you know, about 140,000 more being transferred to golf and operations. Uh, we've got about a million, uh, million sixty-eight thousand for many new master plan projects, and then new financing directly related to the amenity master plan projects. So we probably will have to do some new financing for these projects, and then we end up with projected uh, funds about three hundred seventy-two thousand, and that's primarily that recreational amenity reserve fund. Uh, which is that fund where property transfer money goes into, as well as money that uh, uh, Wyndham uh, pays us when they develop a new a neighborhood. Okay, let's talk about the amenity master plan then. In 2013, we really only had three projects. Uh, St. George Marina Pavilion, Dorchester Pool Cabana, and then multi-purpose building, the interior renovations that if you've been over there, been to a board meeting, you can see that's been transformed in that one room, the A and B rooms as we call them. This is your old pavilion at St. George Marina. This was where they used to do the fish fry. It was really just a little shed. It had an exhaust fan, but health department said, no, this, this doesn't work. Uh, so they actually shut down the fish fry a few years ago before I even came here. So as a result of that, we decided to uh, uh, add a kitchen and restrooms that would comply with health department codes. This is a picture from the lake. You can see, first of all, a different color. This area right here, and I have another picture that's closer up, is the restrooms and then the new kitchen. So it's got a much nicer view from the lake. Closer view. 
Uh, this was actually one of our fish fries. Our photographer came in and uh, this was either the first or second fish fry we did. And we had a good number of people enjoying themselves both inside and outside. See, we still had the silt fence up from the uh, construction. So uh, as soon as that was done, we started the fish fries. This is the restroom area over here. That's the doorway into the restrooms. And then this is your kitchen area right here. Okay. And uh, now, fish fry, very successful this year. You may not be able to see it, but down at the bottom, 17.